And that's going to be, that's actually true, okay? That's what we kind of get to figure out here from that activity. So we're going to kind of summarize that. So we're going to get into some more proofs today. Okay, I know, not the most fun thing, but these are actually relatively painless, I would say. Um, you know, I guess you'll be the judge of that, right? Okay, but I think they're relatively painless. Okay. <coughs> so, to prove triangles congruent, okay, I'm going to start by saying, by kind of asserting the fact that you do not need, you do not, okay, need <coughs> to know all three sides and all three angles to show that triangles, that two triangles are congruent. Certainly if we know that, if we know that all three sides of one triangle are congruent to all three sides of another triangle and that all three angles of the one triangle are congruent to all three angles of another triangle, we know those triangles will be congruent. But that's not, that, that's, that's excessive information. Okay, our groups are able to figure out in three, three kind of steps. Okay, at most, you need three particular, okay, so three, I say particular because it can't just be any three any three. But if you have three particular pieces of information, and some of you guys figured out what those three particular pieces were, three particular pieces of information. Okay, and most you need three particular pieces of information. Okay, so would one of the groups like to share their strategy for how they figured out? So Evan, what'd you, what would you guys go uh, for? We started off by getting one of the, um, one of the angle measurements. One of the angle measurements. Then got another one of the angle measurements. Another angle measurement. Sure. For the third question, we asked what one of the sides were because if we found one of the sides of one of the two angle measurements, we could cross it and find what it is. So, and so you didn't ask for just any side. You specifically asked for a side between the two angles that you knew, right? And so that is one of the congruences, okay? That is what we call angle side angle, ASA for short, okay, congruence. Okay, so that they discovered that's a congruence, okay, whether you guys realize it or not. If you know that two angles and the side between them on one triangle is congruent to two angles and the side between them on another triangle, those two triangles must be the same exact triangle. Even though you don't know the other two sides, just with this information alone, that is enough to show those triangles congruent, okay? And I'll draw a picture of that. So, for example, let's say I've got, like, triangle here, and a triangle here, and let's see, I want to try and make sure I do this relatively all right, yeah, it's all right, all right, I'll call this triangle uh, B-A-R, okay, and I'll call this triangle M-O-P like that, <coughs> and I'll mark some congruencies in here, to kind of, you know, show what Evan was um, talking about. Oops. There we go. Okay. So this is exactly what Evan and his group was talking about, okay? They asked for two angles, which really gave them the third, and they asked for one of the sides that was between the two angles, that, the, the side between the two angles that they knew. And this is enough to show the two triangles are congruent. And so we're going to actually then name them. We're going to write that congruence here. So I'm going to say the triangle BAR, okay, is congruent to, and now can I just name this triangle however I want over here? I've said triangle BAR, right, is congruent to, and then can I just name this triangle over here whatever I want? Yeah, no, okay, and why and why can't I? Can someone explain why we can't just name whatever letters we want here? Yeah, okay, Hunter? You have to make it P, M, O, because B, A, like line B, A, it has to be line B, M, O, and then line B, A, line B, M. Okay, K, 
careful. Look at how BA is marked. BA, BA has a tick mark. So you got the right idea. BA has to match up with what, though? MO. Yeah, MO, okay? And specifically in that order, too, right? Because angle B matches up with what angle? Does it? Angle B here is marked as one arc here, so what does it have to match up with? Oh, oh. Is it? O's got two tick. O's got two. M. Yeah, M's got the single mark there. You see that? So B and M are the same angle. So that means we have to start this triangle with, triangle with, with angle M. Okay? It's right. It's going to be MOP. Exactly right, Keegan. So then the um, A is the next one, and that matches up with the O. And then R has to match up with the P then, therefore. But notice, by doing the angles correctly, we also get the sides thrown in. B, A, M, O. They match up. Okay? And then A, R would be the corresponding thing for um, O, P, which you might not believe it. It's not really drawn that way. But, again, with the congruencies, the way they, with the way it's pictured here, that's the way it should be. And then B, R would be the same thing as M, P. Okay? So be careful. You can see this, this, this triangle is kind of, they're kind of rotated a little bit from one another. They're not exact reflections of, of each other. They're more like a rotation. Okay? But that's the idea. Okay? Uh, let's see here. What about... Um, Patrick, how about your group? What was, what was your kind of strategy? Did you use the same one or did you use a different one? We got... We got the greatest side length. Greatest side length? Two angles that were adjacent to it. Okay, so that was then an angle side angle. You got a side length and then two angles that were touching it. So that would have been the angle side angle congruence. Okay. Did anyone use a different strategy besides using one side and then two angles touching it? So uh, let's, uh, Mary, go ahead. Why don't you explain? We used two sides and one angle. And the angle was between those two sides, right? Okay, so guess what that's called? Side angle side congruence. Okay. That's right, SAS. Okay, so side angle side is exactly that strategy. I'll draw a quick picture here. Okay, and I'll label this here B I G. <coughs> Ugh, these don't look anywhere near congruent, but you'll have to just trust the markings. That is just, yeah. Again, we have to trust the markings here, so that does not look congruent, but you have to take my word for it, okay? It does work. Okay. So again, you can name that first triangle however you want. Okay, so I'm going to, because it spells big, I'm going to go triangle B-I-G. Okay, but then the second triangle, right, we can't just pick it, we can't just name it however you want, and so how, how must we, how must we name this um, other triangle here? How must we name it? Anyone want to volunteer here? How must we, Mary, yeah, go ahead. So B matches up with T, yep. And then I follows along that first congruent segment there to the R, that's right. And then A is the other one. Okay? So be careful, right? Just because that other triangle could spell rat doesn't necessarily mean that's how it's going to be written out when you do your congruence. Okay? So don't be like, oh, I see. It's going to be a big rat. You know? It's nope. It's not the case all the time. So be on your lookout. Be on the lookout for that. Okay? Notice here for side, angle, side, okay, the angle is purposely placed like this. The angle is between the two the two congruent sides there, okay? The sides there are then congruent, you know, correspondingly congruent to the other triangle there, okay? So the angles between them. All right. And did anyone have any other strategy, I think? How, what was the strategy, Shannon, that your group used? Do you remember? It was the angle, yeah. Okay, angle, side, angle. Okay. So there's a few other ones. So no one used side, side, side. Okay? If you, yeah, if you just asked for three sides, you would have enough information. Okay? If you just asked for three sides, you would, have enough, you would have enough information there. And so that one's an easy one to kind of like draw here. OK. 
okay, and I'll call this like triangle ABC and this one triangle DEF. No clever names here. Okay. And so, Shannon, could you tell me what would be the congruence that we write for this one? So how would you name this first triangle? Sure. Yeah, and this one I did put it in a nice alphabetical order there for you. So, yep, triangle DEF. Okay. AB matches up with DE. BC matches up with EF. And then AC matches up with DF. So it works. Okay. So there's that. Let's see here. So we did side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle. Okay. There's another one. There's two more, actually, two more. So angle, angle, side. Oh, by the way, real quick here. So side, side, side is congruent. So that means if you have three sides of a triangle, you're guaranteed that it's congruent. I mean, if, you, if you have three sides here, it's guaranteed to be congruent to th those three. Sorry. If three sides here match up to three sides here, those two triangles must be congruent. Okay? What about angle, angle, angle? If you know three angles in one triangle and they match up to three angles in another triangle, are those two triangles guaranteed to be the same size, the no. same shape? No. Right. That's what I'm, but, but, but if, but here's the thing I'm saying though. If you have three angles in one triangle and they're the exact same angles as another triangle, are those two triangles guaranteed to be, to be congruent? Why not? So what we could have is a same angles, but maybe one sh one shape is six times longer by its size. It could be it could be like a blown up shape, still be the same angle measures, right? But the side lengths would be different. And so that's right, okay? So angle angle is not, or angle 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 is not, which is still angle angle same thing. But that's a similarity, um, a similarity uh, relationship, and we'll talk about that when we get to the similarity unit. Okay. So anyway, angle, angle side, though, is one. Notice here where the side is. The side is not between the two angles. It's next to them. <coughs> okay, it's outside of that. So let me draw a little picture of that. <coughs> Excuse me here. Okay, and I'll call this one triangle T-U-X. And this one, triangle E, D, O. Okay. So you can see the difference here between, bless you, angle, angle, side, where you see the two angles and the side is not between them. Right? See, so it's not between them. If it, was, if it was between them, that'd be angle, side, angle. Right, angle side angle would be if it was TU that was marking congruent, but here it's angle angle side. Okay, so there's the difference there. That's an angle angle side congruence. All right, and so again we can call this. So let's see, we can say TUX triangle TUX tux is congruent to, and then Maria, how would this one match up? So what does T match up with in this other triangle here? Uh -huh. O, and then what would be the U, D, and then E. So, tux ode. Tux, triangle tux is going to triangle ode. Okay. <coughs> and the last one is angle side side. Just kidding, it's hypotenuse leg. Angle side side is not a, not a congruence. I'm not going to have you guys write bad words on your paper. Okay. So, hypotenuse leg... And believe it or not, angle side side really is not a congruence. Like, it's not that, like, math mathematicians just agreed, like, we won't talk about this one because it spells out a bad word or something like that. It's, it doesn't make a triangle. Or it doesn't guarantee the triangles are congruent, okay? So it's not just us trying to, uh, you know, avoid spelling out things, okay? So if, you, if I ever ask you if the two triangles are congruent, you know, tell me, tell me how you know, Okay, and you you like you're thinking is it angle side angle is it side side side? Don't ever put angle side side. Okay, because it's wrong, it's wrong. Okay, it's wrong. So don't do that. Okay, but I know when I was sitting in geometry class in your seats, 
And I was like watching up on the board, and I was like, come on, <laughs> come on. And then it didn't happen. I was like, oh. So, yes. It's a mess. It's a mistake. I, I started writing something that I wasn't supposed to. <laughs> and I, I just scratched it out because I don't have my... I do have like a white out. Oh, there it is. Right there. It's kind of neat. It's like a ballpoint white out pen. Voila. Okay, so hypotenuse leg. Now, you might look at this, though, and say, wait a minute, Mr. Woodmeyer, you just said that at most you need three particular pieces of information. And you were like, with me, because there's like three there, there's three there, there's three there, there's three there, but here, hypotenuse leg. When I say hypotenuse leg, I only see two pieces of information, Mr. Woodmeyer. How come you said three? Well, in order for a triangle to have a hypotenuse, what kind of triangle must it be? It must be a right triangle. And so, so this hypotenuse leg congruence requires, okay, the third piece of information is that it requires a right triangle. If you don't have a right triangle, you can't use it. So that's like the third piece of information. Okay. <coughs> All right, so if we set that up then, and this kind of is an angle side side actually. And maybe this is how mathematicians get away with it, is we call it hypotenuse leg instead. But I'll show you. It kind of works out to be an angle side side for a right triangle. <coughs> okay, so there it is. When math books do refer to this, though, they say side side angle. That's how to get away with it. Okay. So again, we'll just name these. But you can see, again, the hypotenuse is always the side opposite the right angle there. So there's the hypotenuse, congruent to another hypotenuse. And then the leg is one of the other two adjacent, the sides that are adjacent to the right angle there. And so we could say here, triangle M-O-N is congruent to what? Triangle Y-E-K. <laughs> What's so funny? Gotcha. Maniac. There you go. Maniac. Okay. So those are the congruences then that you guys could have used the hypotenuse leg only for the right triangles, but all four of these were possible strategies to use for that game, okay, basically. And so you can see why, you know, most, most of you guys, once you kind of figured out the strategy or once you kind of figured things out, is that you really only needed four steps in that game. First three for asking the particular piece of information, and the fourth one, then check to see if you were right or not. Okay? So that's the goal. Okay? So we're going to look a little more in-depth today. So if you guys would, please go grab your books from the bookshelf. You're like, wait a minute. We're not done yet? No. We are not done yet. We're going to do some proofs. Some proofs. Okay, <coughs> please turn to page 231. Actually, not 231. That's like, I mean, that's like where the section starts, but I'm going to have us skip a whole bunch. And we're going to skip on to page 234. My apologies. Page 234. All right. So on the bottom of page 234, you'll see this explain to. All right. I skipped over the easy stuff that I think you guys shouldn't have too much problems with here. This entire section, okay, so like all the proofs we're going to look at today are going to deal with proving triangles congruent using angle side angle which I don't, know if, I don't know if I really like that they do this because it kind of takes away part of the challenge because you already know where you're going to end up. But some of you guys are probably like, I'm okay with that. And all right, that's fine. You guys got that. But, but in the future, you know, these, I told you, these kind of proofs are the proofs where you're going to do it from scratch. So you'll be given just like this eventually, and I'll ask you to prove the triangle is congruent. 
Okay. So now you can see this one's already worked out for us. So we're going to just take a look at this, okay, at this proof. You can see we're given information and we're given a goal of what we're trying to prove. And you see we have a picture over here too, which helps. My recommendation is when you see this given information here, go ahead and mark it into your picture, okay? So for example, angle MPQ, MPQ is congruent to NPQ. Oh, sorry, I can't read. Goodness, MQP. So that's this angle is congruent to NPQ. That's that angle. Okay, right? <coughs> and then angle MPQ, so this angle, is congruent to NQP. So that angle. <coughs> okay? So if you look at that, we're two-thirds of the way to angle-side angle, right? We've got one, two pairs of congruent angles. And so we just need to come up with one more congruence. In fact, in this case, what's the other congruence that we have according to this picture? What else is going to be congruent between these two triangles? Line what? QP, right. How do you know they're going to be the same? Yeah, exactly. Both triangles are sharing side QP, okay? So if you look here at the proof, remember in our proofs, guys, where do we always start? With the given information, they choose to list that in two steps. If you were doing your own proof, you could feel free to write both of those in one step. That's fine, okay? And then step three, there's Shannon's um, thought right there, okay? QP is congruent to QP. And how do we know something is congruent to itself? What's the reason for that? Well, it's the reflexive property, right? Something congruent to itself. Remember that property. That's why we learned that one, because we're going to use it here in these. And then we have an angle, an angle, and then there's a side... And so we get the angle side angle. We can now say that these two triangles are congruent by angle side angle congruence. And we're done. Very straightforward, yeah? Okay. Questions on any of that? Questions on any of that? That one was done for us, so it's a little bit, you know, kind of like <coughs> silly. All right. Let's go on to this next one here then. <coughs> okay. So 235, top of page 235. Okay, so again, we're giving some information here. Angle A is congruent to angle C, so let's mark that. Okay, and E is the midpoint of segment AC. Now, notice that is not a congruence. But if we know that E is the midpoint of AC, so here's segment AC, and if E is the midpoint, what kind of what congruence can we come up with from that? I'm going to pick someone here. Let's see, sir. So, John... If we know that E is the midpoint of segment AC, what can we say is congruent then? If E is in the middle of this segment, what two things must be congruent? And if you're not sure, that's okay. But Well, so that was given to us. We know that's true already. But I'm talking strictly about segment AC. Segment. Beautiful. Perfect. Exactly right. Okay. Segment AE is congruent to segment EC. Okay. That's right. Now, those are the only two congruences that were kind of given in the information from the given. But can anyone pick out from our picture here? Is there anything else we know must be congruent just on the way the picture is drawn? Hunter? Okay, we don't know that E is the midpoint, though, of segment BD. So we can't say that. But there is something we can say just based on what we see in the picture here. There's one other congruence we can see based on just what's in the picture. Shannon? Angle AEB, this angle, is congruent to angle DEC, this angle. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, how do you know that? Vertical, exactly right. Because the way the picture is drawn, these two angles are going to be congruent because they're vertical. And so we can now we can see we have angle side angle congruent to angle side angle. So we proved the triangle congruent. Now it's just a matter of putting that down on paper. Okay. So now let's go through the proof here. So that's basically the explanation. That's how you do it. We just now got to you know be formal. <coughs> okay. So let's see here. So Drew, step one. Statement one, angle A is congruent to angle C. What's the reason for that? No, given. given. You got it. Okay. Uh, Patrick, how about number two? E is the midpoint of given. segment AC. Given. Beautiful. Very good. <coughs> okay. 
Melissa, AE is congruent to CE. What kind of reason should we give for that? <coughs> how, was, how was John able to tell that AE and EC were congruent there? What piece of information? You got it, yeah, E is the midpoint. You could say, you could say that, E is the midpoint of AC. Or if you just said like definition of the midpoint, that's also acceptable. Okay, if you said like definition of the midpoint, you know, that, that, that's acceptable as well. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Let's go to... Okay, Hunter, how about step four? How do, you know that, how do we know that angle AEB is congruent to CED? Because they're vertical angles. And again, you can just write the... I mean, really, I'm okay with you just writing vertical angles. If you want to write like vertical angles are congruent, you know, that's fine too. But we understand that vertical angles are congruent. Actually, maybe I'll write that. Vertical angles are... I'm going to put the congruency symbol, though, so that way I don't have to write the word out. Okay. So there's not a whole lot of space there. All right, and then Julie, last step here. What are we using to prove these two triangles congruent? Which of our congruences that we talked about? Close. Where is the side, though? The side is between the two angles. So it would be A, S, A. Angle, side angle. Exactly right. And it's, those are the two that to e get easily confused because one of them the side's between and one on the side's not between. So that's understandable. Okay. But actually if you have angle side angle you automatically have angle angle side. Because here's the thing, right? If I know that these two angles are congruent to these two angles, well that means my third angle must also be congruent and therefore I'll have angle angle side. So you're not like completely off there. And vice versa is true too. If you have angle angle side you also have angle side angle. But anyway. <coughs> Okay, let's move on now to this next one, number eight. Okay, this is a your turn, but I'm not going to make you guys do this one on your own because, yeah. <coughs> I'll maybe have you try the next one, we'll see. But this one, okay, I'm going to do together with us just because. Okay, so you have to be careful here. There's like... One, two, three, four, five. There's like, I don't know, five, six, seven triangles I can see in this picture, if you think about it, right? You have like these two small ones, and you got this one, and you got the overlapping ones, okay? <coughs> so, try not to get too confused here. Make sure you're looking at the right triangle. So, JML, it's this big one we're trying to prove is congruent to KLM, which is the other big one. So, they're kind of like overlapping each other, if you can see that, okay? We're saying that angle JLM, so JLM, this one, is congruent to KML, so this one. And then JML, which is like that one, is congruent to KLM, which is like that one. Okay, so you, hopefully you can see that there. So let's go ahead and state those just because I think, yeah, I think they're giving these four steps. I think one is for one of the, con one of the givens. I think they're going to use the given, they're going to list, you know, the givens in two different steps. Which, again, you don't have to when you're doing it on your own, but because we're, like, forced to fit this format, we'll just go from there. So let's list the givens in two separate steps because that's the way they want us to do it in the book here. Okay, and again, it is given. Okay. So, that's the easy part. I took care of that for you. What's some other congruence that we have here? What's something else we can say is congruent? Evan, what do you say? Okay, but you want to say LM, though? Okay, so what about LM? Uh, All right, Shani, you want to help him out? LM is equal to the of LL. Yeah, and you can say LM and LM in the same, that's fine too, but yeah, well we, can, we can do it that way. So LM is near to ML, okay? So that, that side LM is shared by both triangles, okay? I mean, I don't know if that, I think that's what you were probably getting at, right? I mean, this LM was shared by this right triangle that's overlapping the other triangle. 
And so that's the reflexive property. Okay. Well, we have one, two, three congruences, so we should be able to prove those triangles congruent. So, that, so this fourth step, okay, what do we write for that fourth step, uh, Zishan? What's going to be for the statement here? Uh, AA does triangle congruence. Okay, so that'll be, okay, so hang on. First of all, what's the statement going to be? I think you were going for the uh, reason. What's the statement? Sorry, um, That's okay. <coughs> triangle uh, J, L, er, triangle J, L, M. Well, I'll give you a hint. It's also in the proof. That's what we're trying to prove. So you can just uh -huh. use that one. Uh, triangle JML yeah. uh, is congruent to triangle KLM. Yep. And if you list it in a different order, that's okay. Just make sure your different order matches then the, the, like it corresponds then to a different order in the second triangle too. But you can absolutely just use what's listed there for the, for the proof and then you can go. And so then what was the, what's the congruence we're going to use though? AAS. So not A A again. AS technically works here, but the side is between the two pairs of congruent angles. So it's ASA. ASA. Angle side angle. Okay? <coughs> so there it is. All right, I would like you guys... Any questions? Sorry, let me do any questions on that first. All right, so let's flip this over. I want you guys to give this next one a try. Okay, now it looks like I'm giving you one that's even more challenging here because from the given information, you aren't given any congruences. Okay, <coughs> but I think, well, you're kind of giving one congruence, right? Because angle S and angle U are both right angles. So anyway, give this one a shot, see what you can come up with. Okay, if you don't, like, if you don't need all these block boxes to do it, that's okay. Or if you need more boxes, that's okay too, okay? But try and give this one a shot, see what you can come up with there, okay? And if you get stuck, well, you should at least be able to get the first two steps down. Okay, so I'll do that real quick here, and then I'll come around and help. Whoops.
Okay, so when you're talking about a segment, bisecting a segment, that doesn't mean you have two congruent angles. Now, you're right about this, though. But is that the reason? How do you know that RTS is going to be to you? It's not because they're being bisected. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. But now you do want to use that, that bisector thing. If RV is bisecting the segment and you, what congruence do you have from that then? So this is bisecting this thing. So T is the midpoint of that thing. Yeah. So how would you, what, what can you say is the ruin then? Again, just only, only, only from this piece of information, if we know that T is in the middle of S U, what must be congruent? That's that. That's another thing. Okay, so, and again, so angle T, you gotta be careful here, you wanna use the three letter name for angle, for like this because T could be this one, we can say like this angle, this angle, or one angle. So we have instead like F, T, R, and U, T, B. And then they're, they're equal not because of this, but what are they? Yeah, that's that.
They should be well true. You could you lose well. We can't say these two are congruent. And I got confused on that myself. When we say that R D binds X S U, that does not mean the reverse is true. You see what I'm saying? The only S U is being cut into two equal parts. R D is not necessarily now granted because we're going to show you some triangles are congruent, then it's true for that as well. But yeah, we can't necessarily use that. So we don't have a, the hypotenuse part of it. Okay. Yeah, so you would just scratch out that part and then you're okay. So you can leave that. Just scratch out the RT and you're going to Okay, let me show you guys up here real quick. All right, in the interest of time here, let me show you this. Show you this. And I actually, I'm, I messed up a little bit here myself. So, but I'll go through it here with you. Okay. So whether you chose, whether you chose to do your two givens as one step or as two steps, that's going to determine whether you fill it, filled it out or whether you had some extra space left over. <coughs> okay. Um, I think in the book they ask that you do the givens in two different steps, and so that's what I did here, okay, starting with the two givens. Now, because angle S and angle U were only named as right angles, you must, as part of your proof, also then say they're congruent, okay? Just saying they're both right angles, according to this book, okay, is not enough to show that they're congruent. You need to actually state them as being congruent. But why do we know that? Well, because they're both right angles. So it's like, duh, okay? It's, it's kind of obvious. Um, the next thing we state then, we have, you don't have to do this next, but it's one of the other statements. The vertical angles there, okay, are congruent. And then finally, ST is congruent to TU. Why? Because RV is bisecting. SU, so it cuts into two equal parts. That's the definition of the bisector. And then once you have those one, two, three congruences, in this case you get an angle side angle, and there's our there's our congruence. Okay? <coughs> questions on that? You guys are gonna have some for homework, so you want if you have any questions. This one right here? So like you had AAS? Yeah. So again, Technically, if you have ASA, then it's also AAS, but I will say that the way we have this set up, we, we, we were really aiming for the ASA because, again, look at what the picture is. Angle, side, angle is congruent to it, angle, side, angle, the side between the two angles there. So we really, it technically is angle, side, angle, but I, it's not wrong to put angle, angle, side. So I didn't really answer your question. Uh, I would let me say this. I would prefer angle, side, angle, but I would probably not mark it wrong if you put angle, angle, side. Okay? All right, so let me give you guys your assignment then.